Welcome everyone to San Francisco Banner and Baptist Church's English Ministry Service on this Sunday morning. We're so glad you're able to join us, whether you're worshiping with us in church, on YouTube, Zoom, or elsewhere. It's a blessing that we're able to fellowship together for God, and we hope that you can join us in person soon since our doors are open. Let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, you are our faithful Father, and we adore your name and glorify your name forever. We're here today to worship you, and we ask that you accept our praises and let us feel your grace and be refreshed and renewed in this new year as we grow in you. Continue to watch over us and protect us from illness and guide us according to your will this morning. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Greetings to all of you in our sanctuary this morning, and also greetings to all of you who are watching us right now through our YouTube live stream. Thank you all of you for joining us this morning. Well, the holidays are officially over. I know for some of us, we're still trying to get rid of the uh, holiday blues. Um, hopefully that this message will reinvigorate you. And we hope that this message will also touch your hearts. I do pray that all of us will have a blessed new year. Last week, we learned that what defiles us is our heart. It is our evil hearts which make us unclean and therefore unfit to enter God's kingdom unless we receive a new heart. And today we will look at what we need to do to have faith, but not just any kind of faith. A great faith. But before we open the text this morning, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Lord God, we come before you. And we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity that we can just gather together to worship you. Whether that is physically or virtually, Lord, we're just grateful for this privilege that you've given us. Father, at this time, as we uh, begin to prepare our hearts and we're about to open your word, we pray that your Holy Spirit will fill each one of us. Lord, you will speak to us. Help us to be receptive to your word. Help us to seek your face. Lord, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 15 today. We will read from verse 21 to verse 25. So remember, Jesus had just finished explaining to the crowd that it is the heart that defiles a person. And now, verse 21. When Jesus left there, he withdrew to the area of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came and kept crying out, Have mercy on me, Lord, Son of David. My daughter is severely tormented by a demon. Jesus did not say a word to her. His disciples approached him and urged him. Send her away because she's crying out after us. Jesus replied, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came 
knelt before him and said, Lord, help me. So after Jesus left Galilee, the Bible says that he went to the area of Tyre and Sidon. So these two cities, Tyre and Sidon, were Gentile cities north of Israel. And as you can see on the map, here is Tyre and Sidon. Now what's interesting is that this was the only time that Jesus left the land of Israel and entered the land of the Gentiles during his complete mission, his entire ministry. And while he was ministering there, he met a Gentile, a Canaanite woman who approached him. Now the Canaanites were God's enemies from the Old Testament that lived in this area. So the Canaanite woman approached Jesus and she cries out, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely tormented by a demon. Notice what she calls Jesus. She calls him son of David, meaning the Messiah, the king sent by God. And because this Gentile woman, this Canaanite woman, understood who Jesus was, she knew that he could help her daughter. And she kept on begging and, and, and pleading about helping her sick daughter that was being tormented by a demon. And as she was begging and as she was pleading for help, all this time, Jesus did not say a word to her. He did not respond. But we see that Jesus' disciples urged him, urged Jesus to, to just heal the woman's child, the woman's daughter, so that she'd go away and leave them alone, that she would stop bothering them. But pay attention now to how Jesus responds. He says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, our first reaction of Jesus' response, we may see it as no. It seems like Jesus is saying no. But let's dig a little deeper now. In John chapter 10, verse 16, Jesus says, But I have other sheep that are not from this sheep pen. I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice. Then there will be one flock. One shepherd. So according to Jesus, some of the sheep are not from this sheep pen. Meaning they are not from Israel. They're not the Israelites. But they will be added. These other sheep will be added to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Including you. Including me. And even this Canaanite woman. Now, now understand that the expectation until this time was for Jesus to only help the Jewish people, not anyone else. 
And this is what the disciples were also about to learn. Let's look at verse 26 to verse 27. So remember, after the woman had cried to Jesus about casting out the demon from her daughter, verse 26, Jesus answered, It isn't right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Yes, Lord, she said. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Now the word here, children, was a word to describe the Israelites. And this word, dogs, was a derogatory word used to describe the Gentiles or the foreigners. And this implied that they were unclean according to the Old Testament laws. So as we read this text, especially with these terms, sometimes the meaning is misinterpreted. And and this happens a lot in other languages. You know, for example, in Mandarin or even in Japanese. Sometimes the meaning, when directly translated, is different than the intended meaning. So the exact word Jesus uses here in the Greek was kunarion, which means small dog or pet dog. And this is completely different. This is a completely different word which is used to refer to an unclean animal. And again, In their day, everyone understood that Jesus was not being cold or heartless and just merely subjecting her with name-calling. But in fact, this was an invitation. You know, calling someone a pet dog in those days implied that, that this Canaanite woman that she could actually enter the owner's home. And in this case, we're talking about the house of Israel. So when she heard that she was called a dog or a pet dog, I mean, though it was meant to be an invitation, you know, it still sounded a little bit offensive. But with a deep Humility, she answers, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. So she understood that she was unworthy to be called children. But instead, she was to be called a dog. She knew that she didn't deserve to be called the title children. But she was okay. She knew she didn't deserve the blessings of the Messiah. And this is something we need to remember. If we want to receive God's blessings, if we want to be used by God, if we, if, we want to, if we want God to work through us, we cannot be proud or become offended. We need to be humble because God gives grace to the humble. And this is what you will see in the people that God uses. The great evangelist, Billy Graham, a couple of years ago, he went to be with the Lord. And in one of his books, he wrote 
the day I pass away and enter the gates of heaven, the question I would ask is, why me? God, why me? Why did you choose me to be a part of what you're doing? He received God's blessings because he was humble. The great missionary to China, Hudson Taylor, he was once asked why he was so successful. He said, I often think that God must have been looking for someone small enough and weak enough for him to use. And that he found me. He received God's blessings because he was humble. The great apostle Paul, he said, he is the least of the apostles. Later, as he continued to serve God in Ephesians, he wrote, I am the least of all the saints, meaning I am the least of all Christians. And toward the end of his ministry in 1 Timothy, he wrote, I am the worst of sinners. He received God's blessings because he was humble. When more a Christian grows, when more we grow, the more we will understand humility. This is why if you are looking for someone spiritually mature, don't look for their, their credentials, their education, or even their titles. Look for humility. Because God will bless those who are humble. And this is what Jesus saw in the Canaanite woman. He said, woman, your faith is great. Let it be done for you as you want. And from that moment, her daughter was healed. Jesus did not condemn this Canaanite woman because she wasn't Jewish. He didn't preach any longer about children versus dogs. Jesus simply said, your faith is great. Let it be done for you as you want. And from that moment, the woman's daughter was healed. Jesus redeemed and restored her daughter back to health. And she was no longer tormented by the demon. Now notice the connection here between the woman's request and Jesus' grace and mercy. The connection was faith. Because of the woman's great faith, she experienced the power of of Jesus. You know, we've been spending a lot of time talking about the Pharisees recently. But you see, the Pharisees never understood this. I mean, these were the people who knew the Bible so well, yet they were the ones with the least faith. Jesus' own disciples, the twelve, they were being admonished by Jesus for also having little faith. And we see this sometimes with Peter and the, and the other disciples as well. But there were two Gentiles that Jesus encountered in his ministry that had great faith. One was the Roman centurion who asked for his servant to be healed. 
And now we're looking at this passage here, this Canaanite woman who begged for Jesus to heal her daughter. And for both, Jesus granted their request. Now understand this. If we have a great faith, whatever we ask, and if it is according to his will, these requests will be granted by Jesus. God will grant those requests. So now that we know that a great faith is needed, how do we do that? How, how do we get that? How do we obtain this great faith? See, when we look at this centurion woman here, we first see that she believed, wholeheartedly she believed, that Jesus was the son of David. Again, meaning the Messiah, the Christ, the one sent by God. That's number one. Number two, she believed that Jesus was able, that he was capable. In fact, she went as far to as far much to kneel before Jesus. And she pleaded for Jesus, Lord, help me. And number three, she believed that Jesus was merciful. And as she humbly and persistently continued asking by faith. And that's why Jesus said to her, your faith is great. See, when we, or when you have problems in life, whether they, are, whether they are health problems, financial problems, work problems, marriage problems, school problems, or, or sin problems, or any kind of problems in life, the question is, do we believe? Do you believe? Do we believe that Jesus is the Messiah? That he is the Christ that came to rescue us from our sins? Because if you don't, you need to do that today. That's number one. Do you believe that he is able? Is he capable? Do you believe that? That by his power, not by our power, by his power, because he is God, remember that, that he is able to take away any problems that we may have and that you may have. Do you believe that? And number three, do you believe Jesus is merciful? Do you believe that he is, he is so merciful to those who are humble, knowing that Jesus is their only hope? Because apart from Jesus, there is no other way. There is no other solution. There is no hope but him. And as you humble yourselves, as you humble yourself, will you be persistent to ask him? I mean, not in a demanding way or in a forceful way, but in a humble way. Asking Jesus earnestly. And, and just like this Canaanite woman, she did not give up. I mean, she kept on trying. She humbly persisted because she believed. You know, recently in our small group, we had the opportunity to discuss and even share about our quiet time. 
And we talked about what we did and how that looks like. And as for me, every day, I pray that God will make me more like Jesus. I really do. But not just me. I pray that God will make everyone at our church to be like Jesus. To be conformed to the image and the character of Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Now, many of the things that you may personally pray for, maybe those prayers have not yet been answered. It takes time. Because it's his timing. But Jesus is saying this to us. He's saying, do we believe who he is? Do you believe that he is God? Do you believe that he is able? Do you believe that he has the power to answer our prayers? Whatever it may be. And if it's according to his will, do you believe? Do you believe that he is merciful? And when you realize that by realize that by humbling yourselves to the one true and living God and and to persistently ask him for his help that is when he will grant our requests. Do you believe? Because Jesus says, if we do, and if we believe all that, we believe that Jesus is God, he is able, he is capable, if we mercifully and humble ourselves and persistently ask him that he will deliver. He will grant our requests. It is according to his will. If you do that, he will say, your faith is great. Let it be done for you as you want. Whatever problems you, you are facing right now, whatever problems that you may have, whatever challenges, hardships, trials, tribulations, sufferings, there is only one answer. That's Jesus. Don't give up. Don't give up. Let's all pray. Let's all pray that we can have this great faith. Just like the Canaanite woman. Don't stop asking Jesus. Because if it is according to his will, and again, he knows what's best for us, we don't. He will say, let it be done for you as you want. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for your word this morning. Father, often we we have very little faith. Often we pray and we ask for things, but we don't believe it. We don't have the great faith that was shown in the Canaanite woman. Lord, I ask that you will help us, that you will humble us, that we will believe who you are. 
we thank you that that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, that he is our Lord and Savior, that he is God. Lord, I, I pray that help us to believe that. Help us to believe that he is able, that he is capable. And Lord, we also pray that you will humble our hearts. Help us to realize that you are merciful, but Lord, help us to be humble. Humble ourselves before you. And help us to ask with the humility that you are seeking, that you would want from us. Help us to do that. For we believe and we know that if it is according to your will, if it's according to, to your will, that you will grant our request. Lord, I know that a lot of people, they have been personally praying for whatever problems they may be having, financial, relationship, any sort of issues, health issues. Lord, I just pray that, that you will help us to have this great faith that we can believe. Help us to believe. Help us to have this great faith. If there's anyone here today, Lord, that have not received Jesus, that they don't believe in Jesus, Father, I ask that you will soften their hearts, that they will believe today. They will accept Jesus as their own personal Lord and Savior today. Lord, I pray that you will help them. And Father, as we are now about to bring you our tithes and offering, again, this is a testimony of how faithful you are. Lord, help us to be faithful. Help us to show our humility, knowing that everything that we have been received by you, by the goodness of your grace, is all from you. Everything that we have are blessings that are given by you. So Lord, I just pray at this time that you will help us to give back a small portion which is so rightfully yours. Help us to do that. And may this be used so that this gospel, your word, will spread and it will flourish to the ends of the earth. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you are working in each and every one of us that we are your children. Lord, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today at San Francisco Mandarin Baptist Church. May this message be a blessing to you.
and also to your family. Let's close with the benediction. Let's pray. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit 